story of the day, former NSA uh, national security advisor, that is, Michael Flynn, pleading guilty to lying to the FBI in the Russia probe. And this comes as Robert Mueller, the special counsel's investigation of President Trump, reaches into the president's inner circle. Congressman Denny Heck, he's a Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, joins us now from Capitol Hill. Uh, Congressman, you had been waiting for the Mueller team to include uh, Flynn in its charges. The fact that this was anticipated does not mean it's any less of a big deal. From where you sit, how significant is this? So in a town in which the major news events happen on an hourly, if not daily basis, this is epic. This is, this is seismic in proportion, frankly, because what it really means is that Director Mueller is getting very high up in the food chain. The reality is that there are very few people left for him to get to between uh, former General Flynn and President Trump. So it's all closing in on the president. There's no question about it. And it's not over with. Uh, it's not over with, but we don't know, first of all, how long it's going to last. And we also still don't know the substance of what Flynn could potentially say. We might be able to speculate about who it could involve or what he will say, but we don't know for sure. Uh, when are we hoping to find out and what, what do you think uh, we're going to find out from as this investigation proceeds? Well, I want to remind you that the average life expectancy of a special counsel in the Department of Justice is two years, and we're only six or seven months into this one. That said, I want to take you back to last, last March 31st, when the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence invited uh, Flynn to come before it to give testimony on the Russian investigation. He asked for immunity. It was denied. But at the time, his lawyer said about Mr. Flynn, he has a story to tell, and he really wants to tell it. Well, the bottom line is he's obviously about to tell it. He has pled guilty, in effect, or is about to, to a felony. He is uh, about to be an indicted felon, uh, subject to a prison term of up to five years, but it is only one of many charges that could have been levied against him. So it is a virtual certainty that he's got more to tell the director and that other people farther up the food chain are going to be implicated. The fact is, though, the White House has fired Michael Flynn. It fired Michael Flynn for lying to the vice president. Therefore, they could come out and say he's not a credible witness. He's not a credible person. Forgive me for asking the obvious question here, but what is your confidence that Michael Flynn is being upfront and being honest now when he speaks with uh, the special counsel Mueller? So I think it was some famous fig figure in American history said that there's something about the image of a noose that sharpens the mind. And I think that's exactly what's happened here with uh, General Flynn. He, he, could have, he could have faced a long time in prison. And more importantly, perhaps to him, is his son could have faced jail time. And he's made the calculation, and understandably so, that if he gives up the truth, then he can avoid the worst of these uh, penalties in exchange for telling the truth about those who are involved in the Trump administration and the Trump campaign. And look, the fact that the, the fact that the administration says that they should be given credit for firing him because he lied, that is completely belied by the fact that the president has been in, implicated in trying to get the Department of Justice to back off of the investigation of General Flynn. So it bears no, it has no credibility whatsoever. Congressman, of course, there's also a congressional investigation that is going on into all of these matters. What's the progress of that? I know Eric Prince uh, was just uh, talked to about his connections with Russia. Uh, what, what can you tell us about that investigation? So I think it's fair to characterize this word of football game that we've now entered the second half. Uh, I'd been saying for quite some time we were still in the first quarter, but I think we are, in fact, the second half of this investigation. It proceeds apace. Uh, the interview schedule is, frankly, dizzying and brutal. Uh, we have days when we actually interview two, two witnesses, and, of course, in order to interview witnesses requires the consumption of hundreds of pages of documents, if not thousands of pages of documents. Uh, but we're, we're proceeding apace, and I am still optimistic, as I have been from the beginning, that we will get to the truth. And as a matter of fact, if you want to fast rewind to January and look how far we've come, it is considerable. In January, for example, the administration was saying that the entire uh, allegation of Russian interference Interference in the election was a hoax. Well, they're not saying that anymore. Yeah. And for quite some time they said, well, but there was no collusion. Except for now what they're saying is collusion isn't a crime. So we are proceeding, we are progressing, and we will continue to.
What is the appetite of the rest of the committee to continue this, to, to take it up a notch? I ask because if we're in the second half, there are surely members of the committee that are looking to wrap this up and, and, and tie it with a bow. Uh, now that Michael Flynn's uh, guilty plea has come in, it changes the dynamics and the contour of the investigation. What is the appetite for um, Republicans on the committee to, to dig into this anew, to re-interview witnesses? So the appetite really varies by individual member. You'd have to ask every individual member. My perception has been that there are Republicans that take this very seriously, that understand the existential threat to our democracy that the Russian interference in the election last year represented. And moreover, the threat it represents going forward. If we don't get to the bottom of this, find out the truth and protect ourselves going forward. But it varies by individual. My experience as well has been that when a news revelation of this type comes forward, especially as significant as this one is, that they actually ratchet up the seriousness with which they're undertaking this task. Congressman, thank you so much for your time. Congressman Danny Heck, Danny Heck of Washington, thank you so much of the House Intelligence Committee.